Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. We have found the smoking gun. In the previous video, we discussed the Florida International University bridge collapse. And I posited to you, fair hive mind constituent, engine nerds, brainiacs, and none of the above. I gladly suffer the slings and arrow of the incensed uh, Knickers factory nodded crowd on the internet in order to engender some discussion. This is what is happening throughout North America, at the very least, in, in technical firms, in heavy industry, in construction trailers, around water coolers, is a discussion about what the fuck went wrong and how we can prevent it. The, there is no better way. Now, here's the thing. Uh, getting a lot of negative comments about uh, foul language. Partner, if you can't handle an F-bomb, go fuck your hat. Get out of here now because we are discussing this as we would around a, a water cooler. We're trying to figure out what went wrong. And the beautiful part about it is there's 200,000 brainiacs would watch the previous channel and we have figured out what went wrong. I stand on the shoulders of giants, a great many well-considered comments down below me, as well as on the engineering uh, subreddit on Reddit, as well as a, the engineering forum, some uh, structural engineers, as well as, well, engineers of all creeds and colors commented on this failure. Right off the hop, there's some grainy footage from a security camera. It shows that the bridge fails in brittle, brittle failure instantly. The thing is, everything is a spring. It doesn't fail brittily just like that. Everything has a little bit of give to it. You think to yourself, well, that's bullshit. Glass just breaks. Glass doesn't break. You take a piece of annealed glass, you can bend it. I'll, I'll show you. Here's a craptacular piece of Ikea picture frame glass. Soft as the day she was birthed on a bed of tin. Float glass and super bendy. Have a look at that. You see the bend? Let me show you. Yeah, there you go. It's bending, not breaking. So this bridge section had to have given a little bit prior to failure. And we know it gave a little bit prior to failure because it was reported in the news that the construction workers and a guy passing by who was an engineer somewhere else heard a bullwhip uh, snapping. Pedantry aside, this is not actually a beam, even though on the drawing, to simplify it, it looks like a beam cross-section. It's actually a truss. A truss is like a beam, except it doesn't have a solid web. So we have these, these uh, struts what go along here, and that's to tie the top and the bottom of the truss together. That's what gives it its strength. Well, on the top here, we have the canopy, and on the base, we have the, the bridge deck, and we see there's two cross sections. Here's the stand in for the cross sections. One eighth uh, pine board here. We sandwich them together. We get a quarter inch of strength. But here's what we do with these trusses is we split them up like this. So now, now what we got, just by simply adding some trusses in the middle, instead of a quarter inch total strength, we get an inch of wood. And uh, if only, <laughs> there's a dad joke about uh, something or else in there, but we'll, we'll leave that aside for another video on account of decorum. So that's the way that's working. Now this is a post-tensioned member. So I talked previously in the video about pre-tensioning concrete where it's really terrible in tension. So they put cables through it, bond them in there, sprawling, uh, pull them taut, and then once the once the concrete has set, they release them. There's another way to do that. It's called post tensioning. They have channels in the section, and they put rods through there, tension members, and then after the fact, after the concrete's cured, then they pre tension them, tighten them up, and that squeezes the whole section. Of course, as you saw in the previous video, concrete is very very strong in compression. It's very weak in tension. So what they do is they move that bias over by squeezing it. So now it's already in compression. 
These drawings are the design proposal, so they're very much subject to change as well as field revision as built drawings. I don't have the drawings what have the uh, number nine big red field revision bubble <laughs> on there as built. I'm, I'm sure those are in the hands of the authorities at this point, but we can see an interesting arrangement here and a difference between what was planned and what was enacted. We have the transporters here underneath of each truss member and then a spreader plate between the two. Now, if you look at the installation, there was no spreader plate. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any spreader plate. And also this guy right here got moved over to here because there was a cut bank here and a lane delineator. Just a pain in the ass to get it in there. So I guess a field revision, you know, quick calculation, is it gonna be okay to move it uh, this way? Now, here's the thing. When, because they're, they're building bridge sections, what they did, well, let's look at the construction a little bit further of this main span. So this was designed and built as a post-tension member. Uh, so that would have been through these trusses, there would have been tubes. And into the tubes, they would insert rods, PT rods, post-tensioning rods. Big skookum, beefy bolts, essentially big long tie bolts. And they would be tied here at the top of the blister Right up here, we can see that, or rather, we can see the detail. Look at that, they even called it. We can see the detail here. These would be permanently affixed at the top, and then down at the bottom of the structure. Oh, that's odd. Sorry, I got uh, distracted here by this dead-end anchor. This, this anchor, so we have access to tension these guys from the top of the blister, and this one single member here can only be done from the far end here. It just threw me off. Okay, so this was designed to sit on a pier and a, um, a pylon on this end, affixed on the pylon end and very likely movable, uh, slightly movable on the pier end in order to allow for expand thermal expansion and contraction. The thing's gotta move a little bit, right? So in this case, we wanna move these around and we are not lifting them at their design points to be sitting on the pier. We're lifting them from in the middle. That means that we, what they did was they pre-tensioned these a certain amount to allow them to move this member around. And we saw that, there's a, I'll, I'll put it here. The guy says, okay, we've moved it. Now we are going to change the tension or we're gonna let off the tension. The bridge is now has been in place in its final position, so we're going to be getting ready to dismantle and remove the SPMTs from underneath the bridge back into the staging area. Right after that, we will continue with the demobilization of all the rope plates and detensioning of the two bars on top of the bridge. And right after that, we will be reopening 8th Street to the public now I'm going to show you why these PT members are the smoking gun. You'll recognize this from such hits as the Florida Bridge Collapse. No self-respecting citizen scientist should be without one. It is an Enerpax. It's a, it's a hydraulic cylinder with a hollow core. What that allows us to do, it allows us to pull on things. So I have a stand in here for the PT rod, the post-tensioner rod. And we're just going to go ahead and pull on it and see what happens. Well, we got, we got our all thread here as a stand-in for our PT member, our post-tensioning member. We've got the hydraulic cylinder, what for pulling it. We got a gauge and we also have a pressure transducer for visual readback on the osmeloscope. So we should have lots of, oh, and I'll be filming in high speed so we'll be able to see the results as I pull this. We got the cylinder extended, it's pulling on the rod. We're at 200 PSI, so fuck all in a big ship. This thing will do nominally 10,000 PSI. I got a, made a couple special modifications myself, so it'll actually do 12,000 PSI, which is about eight kilometers down Mariana's Trench, 
pretty deep. We say five miles. Lots and lots of pressure. This thing will kill you right dead quick, fast, in a hurry if and you're not careful. Really don't want to get killed by this fucking thing. Contact. <laughs> Fuck me. Now lean in close and careful real listenly. This is going to be important. We loaded this super quick, about one second, 200 milliseconds in the delineation. There's, yeah, so roughly one second. We can see each pulse of the pump and we are straining it. We're putting a lot of force on it and then the force levels off, the pressure levels off. This level off area is going to be very important in the next explanation, but we can see it's it's taking up strain, it's taking up strain, it kind of levels off and then BAM! It self-destructs in brittle failure. A brittle failure. Remember what I said at the, at the previous. Even bridges got some give to them. So there was a section there where it was giving and there would have been things pinging and cracking and popping. There would have been clues that it was given prior to that brittle failure. Oopsie. That's not good for oscilloscopes. Here's the slow speed one I wanted to show you. Super salient point here. When the rod fails, when the rod fails, it comes fucking whipping out of there. Now we go back to the screenshot of the failure. The rod is dangling in midair with the cylinder still attached. So you say to me, well, maybe the concrete broke and it came flying out of there. But if the concrete truss section breaks, it crushes, it mangles up that steel something fierce. It gets stuck in there. It doesn't come flying out. Well, so you say to me, well, maybe somebody pulled it out after the fact. Well, if it's mangled up, it ain't coming out of that hole. Now, I had a goodly look at all the footage, and there is none of the blisters with the pretensioner, uh, the PT rods, None of the rods have come out. So there we go. The rod breaking is the straw what broke the camel's back. Now, the thing is, why did the rod break? You always got to ask yourself why. So now we know why the final collapse took place. That rod broke and that rod was a tensioning rod. Now we've proven without a shadow of a doubt that it broke prior to collapse because otherwise it wouldn't be hanging half mast in the breeze like that. According to the transport plan, they needed to pretension these bolts in order to move it because it is designed to, to be held on the very ends and these transporters uh, are not on the very ends. So they need to mitigate that somehow. They need to take allowances for that and the way they do that is the pretensioning rods. They change certain things and we'd have to do an FEA and, and well, well beyond the scope of a YouTube video. However, we see that the transporter themselves, here's the original plan, and the, the plan changed because I didn't see any, any load spreaders. There should be, according to the plan, there should be plate steel connecting this guy to this guy. And also, this guy, this far end one here on the pylon, was moved way over here because there was a cut bank, some nasty material, and a, a traffic delineator. So this guy got moved over here, we look on the drawing and not probably a lot of planning went into this. The transporters are directly under the trusses. Now, in this case, this guy got moved over to sort of mid span looking. Was that a problem that weakened this and ended up busting this rod or weakening it to the point where we got into the yield curve? Now, they, this would have stress strain, this would have strain gauges all over. They would know exactly what's going on with this thing. Then they see one of these PT members doesn't have enough strain on it. Somebody goes, okay, there's not enough strain on it. Let's tighten it up. They start tightening it up. They get into that yield area. It's not tightening. It's not tightening. It's not tightening because it's weakened. It's not coming up to the required pull. It's weakening, weakening, weakening. Then all of a sudden it fails, this shatters, this member collapses, and then the whole bridge falls off. So we saw, I thought it broke in the middle. It actually broke right over here, right where they were doing the work. There was a crane there at the time. 
maybe the crane was there to lift up the span because they knew there was a problem and they were trying to remediate it while the fucking traffic is still going, which is a ter just incredible, just an incredible, I can't even, yeah. So this is the crowdsourced best reason why this failed with the information that we have currently. Now that, that might change, there might be more information come to the fore as well, not some non-grainy footage guaranteed the guys that were tensioning, the guys on site, they've all had a chance to, to sit and chat about this, talk about this. They know exactly what went wrong. Now it's up to the investigators to piece together exactly what went wrong. Check all the material specs. There's a, that's a long and arduous process because they need to be absolutely certain on account of the lives hanging in the balance. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.